How are you? Hope you're good. Welcome to the second part of the Q&A and without further ado, you know what? I'm just gonna go and get into it. Do you want to move back to Lithuania in the future? Or how do you see your life in the future? To be perfectly honest, there's nothing for me in Lithuania except for my family. I've never, even when I was living in Lithuania, I never really felt like I belonged in the whole culture and just the whole world. I never really identified with it. I never, I, I never identified as Lithuanian and I never and I still don't identify as Lithuanian even though like I'm not saying anything bad about other Lithuanians or anything here it's just that it was never me I, I've never had a patriotic bone in my body the only thing that makes me Lithuanian is that I've actually that I was born there which was which obviously I couldn't change and the only difference for my attachment to that country apart from my family obviously and any other European or any other country in general really is the fact that I know more about it but that's <laughs> that's really it and whilst it saddens me a lot to leave my family there because my, my sister and her family is there I'm, I'm the only one who left but it just there's nothing for me in Lithuania and Lithuania has nothing to do with me and um, I know it's a really odd thing to say but that's just how it is and how it always actually been it's a little bit of a weird thing to explain to people it's very personal for me to speak about this because it's very complicated for me to explain to people why i feel like that but long story short sorry here um no i don't plan on coming back there there was a brilliant ted talk that spoke about it doesn't matter where you're from it matters where you're local so i am local in scotland and where i'm from should matter what do you want to work with <laughs> Oh, dude, <laughs> this is the question that keeps me up at night. I don't know if I knew that'd be great, but I don't actually know. <laughs> is it what you do now or do you dream of something else? It's, it's definitely not what I do now, but I still don't know what I want to do. And where I work now, I really like the people that I work with, so I don't mind. But it's not what I want to be job-wise. <sighs> if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Harry Potter because then there's eight of them and also I'd be too sad to like get separated from those for the rest of my life and leaving the same question you left for my Q&A who's your favorite person to talk to? you Clara it's you Baba. what's the story that you feel you can relate to the most and the story that you feel you can always go back to time and time again and love just as if it was the first time you're reading it Harry Potter. <laughs> if you could sacrifice Akator, Akamar, and Akawar completely wiped out from your memory for three new Harry Potter books, would you do it? No. I thought for a second there when I was reading this that it was gonna be a hard question, but then I realized that it's not. <laughs> because one, I think Harry Potter has enough. I don't. I, I know it's a horrible thing to say, and how dare I? But I feel like it was really well done. And any addition or extraction would just ruin it. And whilst I love and I go on Pottermore for like additional stuff all the time, I just feel like the main series are done. It's all. And also, I don't want to lose Akamath. It's the best. It's the second best thing. I don't. I know. I need them. I need them in my life. Good question though. What would you suggest for someone starting a book channel? What do you think a first video should be? Again, I might suggest if I if I remember <laughs> to go check my advice for the people who want to start booktube. I did mention that the it's a very very good idea to start with the booktube newbie tag just because it's much easier to, for people to look that tag up and see who's starting up on booktube. So it's very good for making connections, well not connections but like finding people and people finding you more importantly. It really depends on what you want to make because if you don't want to make that tag don't make that tag just make something that you want to make when you were little what did you want to be when you grew up when i was little i really really wanted to be a vet <laughs> then i realized when i grew up that being a vet is actually a horrible horrible job because you mostly just see sick animals and i would cry for days and i would be a hot mess and i just i couldn't um, it's a hor that's the worst job for me i think now like actually realizing what it entails <laughs> i'm not afraid of blood and i feel like i it's not that it's just that it's animals they're just like my kryptonite i can't handle them what book have you not read yet because it feels intimidating and why that has to be s that's the book that i've shown you before where you open and there's like a 
the main book is like a library book and then there's writings in the brackets and there's actually a different conversation and different story in the brackets between like two people and it has like all sort of slip-ins there and it just seems like an extremely extremely cool thing but so intimidating and while it takes me a long time to read one proper book how long is this gonna take like too long so I got it and I was really excited and then I got really intimidated and I just never picked it up yet <laughs> what is the most random historical fact you know Oh no, I'm gonna blank now. I don't know if this is very a historical fact, but I know that there is a phobia in Asia that has a name, I think its name is Cora, and it's literally a, a proper a proper phobia that is actually classified as phobia, but only specifically for Asian population, where people are afraid of looking down and seeing their penises being shrunk. So, that's quite random, but yeah. It's not very, very historical, but it's cultural, so hey. Let's count it, because I'm blanking. I used to know like a lot of those, but I'm blanking, sorry. Are you in school? If so, what do you plan on majoring in? I've actually graduated university a few years back now, because I'm old. <laughs> and I have majored in psychology, and it, and it was horrible, and it was great at the same time. <laughs> what is your favorite Disney movie? So again, either Mulan or Hercules, because I really enjoyed that movie as well, it's, it's, it's so funny. <laughs> what is your ultimate feel-good thing, such as a specific movie, book or food, especially when you're overwhelmed, overcome with anxiety? When I'm overcome with anxiety, I actually cannot focus enough to read at all. It stresses me out even more, I don't know really, I don't actually know why. Might be something to do with the movement of the eyes and you have to focus on something. And I don't really watch movies and I don't eat when I'm actually stressed. If I'm just like semi-stressed, you know, like low-key anxious, then I eat junk, which is really bad and it actually makes your anxiety worse. And, that, and, and I suppose Harry Potter will always, always be that. Cuddle up and like relax think of your childhood movie and ambiance but also Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls and Friends are just the shows that I always come back to because it's just something that you can rewatch and rewatch, and it's always gonna be good and you're always gonna get something new out of it. Maybe not Friends but it's always funny. <laughs> favorite thing about books... this is gonna sound extremely cheesy but my favorite thing of for on YouTube is when, when I upload a video and people start commenting and that is my favorite thing ever because I just feel like you know, I spend so this time on making a video and people actually enjoy watching it and when people say that I make them laugh, it's just the most... I don't know, it gives my life purpose, okay? <laughs> so... <laughs> That is my favorite, favorite thing. Just, it's just insane how it gives me this platform of complete randomness and people grow to like me and trust me and value my opinions and it's just mind-blowing to me and I just appreciate it so much and I appreciate you guys so, so much. You, you will never know, but... You do. <laughs> if you could read any book from the perspective of the villain, which which book villain would it be and why? Ooh. I would actually love to read a book from Amarantha's perspective, from A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Thrones and Roses. I don't know why I feel like they... I would just like to read it from her perspective and I want to know her like backstory and everything. I just... it just really interests me. You You hate her. You don't love to hate her. You just hate her. And I just want to know more about it, it's just it's interesting for me. I was thinking yesterday about my favorite moments from books, so I'm going to spin that around to you. What are some of your all-time favorite book moments? Not favorite book, that's a mean question. Favorite OMG moments from a book or books? I think the whole of The Lightning Struck Hard was my favorite book moment thing ever because it was just such a book of joy for me because it was so funny, so entertaining, so hilariously I don't have words to explain that book, but the whole book was my favorite moment because <laughs> it was just so, so awesome. Which fantasy world would you want to live in besides Harry Potter? I would like to live again in the Knights of or Lord of the Rings because all that's also fun, you know, after the non-fun parts. Are you planning on writing a book someday? I am, but will I? I don't know. How many languages do you speak? Just the two and favorite food tv show movie favorite food favorite dish that i make for myself is mini turkey meatball pies <laughs> and i just i just adore them they're very comfort food and i only really make them like around christmas time but when i do ugh, so good tv show my favorite tv show of all time is orphan black and it's back on netflix with the new season and it's so so good movie uh i think it's maybe still inception i don't know i'm very basic with this <laughs> top three book boyfriends 
Okay, so number one has to be Reese. Then number two, one of the twins from Harry Potter. I don't know, the cool, okay? Or Bill, maybe, from Harry Potter as well. Also Azriel. I know I keep mentioning the same books, but you guys are asking about my favorite stuff, so... <laughs> Have you read Snow Like Ashes and the other two books? If yes, what do you think about it? Not yet, but I do plan on this year sometime. Because <laughs> I really, I, I feel like it's gonna be my cup of tea, even though I don't know much about it. But once I do, I will make a video on it so people know what I think about it. You said we could bond. Can we James Bond? Well played. If I was a Bond character, my name would be Gerald McBaldy. <laughs> oh my god. I would be a minor protagonist who helps 07 in some small but important way. I do not get the girl and I never will. In fact, I will probably die before the end of the movie too. <laughs> okay, your turn. What's your Bond character? I would love to be one of those girls that actually is like secretly evil well not evil but secretly working for the other side and seems like a minor character but is actually really cunning and a major plot twist in the whole movie that would be great i would love that <laughs> who would you cast yourself as in the movie i have no idea although i do get told like time and time again that i don't i look like emilia clark from game of thrones which i wish i did but but since I'm super bad with like celebrities or actors or any other names or pronouncing names It's a lot of things I'm bad at guys <laughs> So I don't actually know Who would you guys cast me as? Let me know in the comments That would be actually really interesting Do let me know Is there a specific character from a book that you identify with more than any other? It used to be Hermione It was really really Hermione Could have afro hair which you cannot see but just trust me I do um, I used to love to study I used to make the calendars for like preparing for exams and you know the schedules and help other people do the same and i was just such a hermione you guys not as smart but how the actual hell do you do we pronounce your name well why do you think i go by g i don't actually go by g anywhere else apart from the internet space and g is completely fine if you do want to struggle it's gintare it's gin as in guitar but with an n instead of a u <laughs> I don't know. And then ta as in like, you know, ta as in thank you in like posh British. And then it just goes into a hard R and if you can't roll your R's then you can't pronounce my name properly like Logan. Um, and then there's a letter that is E which you, English languages doesn't have so that's complicated. But if you put all this together then you get Gantaria. There we go. <laughs> that probably didn't help but... Was it scary to move so far away from where you grew up? It's actually really funny because I wasn't scared at all, but I don't know if I really recognize the significance of the move. It was all really, really easy for me, which is insane. But I was also, the way I grew, grew up, I was uh, raised very independently, so it wasn't a big shock for me to move away from home because I was already being very independent. I was managing my own like budget, and so it wasn't hard at all. It was a bit taunting when I just landed and I just moved and yeah, but it was much easier then I think it would be now if I move now because I think I would just understand the importance of it a bit more <laughs> so whether or not it was easy because I was ignorant of how important that is I don't know when I look back now to it it just seems so brave but I, I really wasn't I just didn't really made it a big deal <laughs> who really runs the house you Logan or the cats we have a whole good like balance thing going on neither of us really like no we run we run ourselves and we don't run each other so it just and cats try to run the house but I, I like to believe that they don't succeed <laughs> most of the time what are the absolute worst books and the best most favorite books you ever you have read so my worst books are mm, Shadow and Bone by Lee Bordugo because I just really didn't like the universe um, and the writing style and the whole it just wasn't for me. Paper Girls graphic novel I didn't like that at all either but I did really love the artwork of it and then Scrappy Little Nobody because that just gave me nothing. Also Catcher in the Rye I never really spoke about this but when I, I and because I, I read it like so so long ago I was still in school but I remember everyone um, raving about it and then I read it and it was so like eh. <laughs> I didn't get anything special and I was like, why? What, what is the dealio with this? I don't get it. it I was like, I mean, I got everything that was there, but I just, I was expecting it to be like deep and important and it was just so... I don't know, I, th I thought it was majorly overrated. And the best ones I've spoken already about, so I think I'm just gonna skip that. <laughs> what are your favorite TV shows? Orphan Black is my absolute favorite TV show and then there's... Uh, 
most of the Netflix original ones I really really enjoy. I'm just finishing up with Rain, but I don't know if it's gonna be my favorite, but Game of Thrones is, so that one. Which is gonna come out today, I think, but not in UK, so that's sad. Or maybe it is, I don't know. Who are your favorite fiction couples? It can be from a book, movie, or TV show. Fiction couples, well obviously Reese and Farah. Then Lupus and Tongs were also one of my favorite couples ever. TV show is gonna be Luke and Lorelai from Gilmore Girls. Um, I'm trying to think but I also don't want to spoil things. So I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. But again, I'm speaking about the same things but we are talking about my favorite things so I'm obviously gonna repeat myself. Do you have an all-time favorite book? At the moment I think it has to be a Court of Mist and Fury. Do you do any color grading, color correction to your videos? Uh, I do, yes, because my camera is quite old, like it's really old actually, and it washes out and changes colors completely, and I can change them into looking natural, so now at the moment I just, like, I have a preset and my editing program where I just pop it up and it just put like a pinkish filter on because if I can get it looking natural, then I'm gonna do something about... I'm gonna do something else. <laughs> then this is my best friend just making fun of me, saying, Will you marry me? Don't you dare not to answer. And of course I'll marry you. I thought we were already married. What the hell? <laughs> if you could dream up the perfect book or the story you are ca uh, craving, what would it be? Hey, Lauren, that's not fair. What if I... But because that's the one I want to write, so I'm not gonna tell you, but... Because I don't actually know <laughs> any specifics. It would definitely be a fantasy. It would involve... Um, just another love story that doesn't overthrow the actual plot and the message behind it. It would be quite dramatic, it would have a lot of death in it, and it would have a lot of torture maybe, not even death, just have a lot of like pain and gore and tragedy in it, but also would have funny bits and it would just be an emotional roller coaster with a lot of plot twists that you don't see coming and it would be, you know, it wouldn't be that the main characters are bulletproof, like, the ma main characters die. <laughs> what is one of your least favorite words? Actually, world is one of my least favorite words. L because just every time my... It's hard to pronounce for me for some reason. It's just uncomfortable. It's not even hard, but it's uncomfortable. So I don't like that word. <laughs> if you could have any animal as a pet, what would you choose? I would still just choose a dog, because dogs are freaking awesome and dogs are the best. <laughs> so I would choose a dog. It'd be Unless you can have a hippogriff, then I would maybe choose a hippogriff. But other than that, I'd choose a dog. <laughs> How are you so damn perfect? I'm not, believe me. I'm so not. And I try to include that in my social medias and everything, especially in Instagram. You know, come on. <laughs> I'm losing my voice, you can hear that. And also, if you, could if you could say just one phrase to an author, living or dead, what would that phrase be? Teach me your ways. <laughs> it would be that phrase, and maybe they would actually do that. That would be great. Okay, so that is everything. Boy, <laughs> that took a lot off from my vocal cords. Thank you guys so much for submitting these questions. I enjoyed this thoroughly. I hope you learned something interesting about me or you've just like passed the time when you're like, I don't know, cleaning or something background noise. I hope I provided, provided a good background noise for you. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will speak to you and see you and, you know, do all of those things soon. Bye.